Hi, it's David from Life with Parkinson's. If you're new here, welcome. We hope you'll consider subscribing. And everybody else, thank you for coming back and watching another episode. Today, we're going to talk about glutathione and Parkinson's disease. Something I've been learning about the last couple months. A lot of it are things that I just wish I'd known more about this on diagnosis day. Like, I'm glad I know now, but I feel just everybody needs to know about this. I think it's a very important subject. We have a lot of exciting and interesting information to get to in this episode, so let's get right to it. Okay, okay, okay. I know the first thing you're going to ask, Dave, what the heck is glutathione? That sounds a lot like gluten. Is it in bread? Is it GMO-free? Is it something we shouldn't be eating if we have celiacs? No. It's a natural antioxidant produced in nearly every cell in your body. A very powerful antioxidant. Sometimes people refer to glutathione as the master antioxidant. It's so powerful and so vital for our cells and our bodies and our brains to have enough of it to fight off oxidization, cell breakdown, toxins, basically anything foreign that's invading our body or anything, any byproduct of cell reproduction in our body that is unhealthy. One of the main things it does is it hunts down free radicals and gives them the extra electron that they need and that neutralizes the free radicals. Glutathione is extremely important for people with Parkinson's and other neurodegenerative diseases because of the oxidative stress that our brains are under. And oxidization refers to like rusting or a slow decay or a slow breakdown. So it's very important that we have enough in our brains to fight the oxidative stress that our neurological conditions give us. And this was confirmed back in the 1980s. When researchers were doing autopsies on people with Parkinson's, they found that people with Parkinson's in the substantia nigra region where we produce our dopamine, that there was little or basically unmeasurable amounts of glutathione in that part of the brain. And they've confirmed that with people with other neurological conditions, such as dementia or Alzheimer's, glutathione is greatly reduced or non-existent in the brain. And what does this mean to us? In my opinion, as a lay person, a person with Parkinson's, not a scientist, researcher, or doctor, when I look into this, I'm like, Okay, I need to tell people who are watching Life with Parkinson's about this because I believe it is so important to be aware of. The oxidative stress that our brains go under with our conditions, sometimes our glutathione levels may not keep up. The simplest ways we can help our glutathione levels is by supplementation. And before I get into specific supplements, I've got to tell you that there is a big difference in regulations on supplement manufacturing between Canada and the United States. These supplements are treated basically as a dietary supplement, as a subset of food, and that's how they're regulated. But in Canada, supplements are regulated to the point of companies that are manufacturing the supplements must ensure that their product is equal or greater than an over-the-counter non-prescription medication, such as extra strength Tylenol or Motrin. So any supplement manufactured in Canada has to meet those basic regulations or they can't make that supplement. I've partnered with a company called Organica, a company in my home province of British Columbia as an affiliate, and they have supplied a discount code that if anybody goes to their website and buys their products and uses their code, this code, LWP25, they will provide you with a 25% percent discount off their products and indirectly you'll be able to support life with Parkinson's and the two supplements that they have that I'm most interested in to help our glutathione levels L-glutathione which is basically the active form of glutathione so as soon as you take it you're fighting those free radicals in your body but the glutathione doesn't have the ability to reach your brain it can't cross the blood-brain barrier which brings on N-acetylcysteine, or NAC, commonly known as NAC, so I'm just going to refer to it as that from now on because I'm probably butchering the pronunciation of the N-acetylcysteine. 
NAC is a precursor to glutathione, so when you take it, it stimulates the production of additional glutathione in your brain, and it doesn't work overnight. It needs time to build up, time to catch up. But the benefits that I've seen after about four to six weeks are increased on time, especially, well, now, both during the day and during the night. One day last week, I was on for 12 consecutive hours during the day. That hasn't happened in ages. And I've even basically stopped using my Parkinson's gloves because they're providing me with so many overstimulation symptoms that I had to stop using them until I get them repaired. I'll be doing that in the next couple of weeks. I'm starting to notice the effects of taking the L-glutathione and the NAC, especially at night when I want to move or roll over. It's a lot easier and my consecutive hours of sleep are increasing. So those are just a couple of things I've noticed off the start. It's a link to a write-up about a study done on NAC recently, where that they discovered that the NAC was actually able to help some dopamine cells like reactivate in people's brains. You know, I'm a lay person, I don't know exactly why, that the research world is not jumping all over this because there's no intellectual property available with NAC. So there hasn't been a lot of study done into the benefits of NAC, and I feel that is a huge opportunity for us as people with Parkinson's to get done. So I'm going to leave it up to you guys to decide if you want to take L-glutathione and NAC. But in the description below, I'll have a link to that study and some other interesting articles because I believe this is an extremely important topic. And I'm just going to read you a couple comments from some of the lead researchers in this study about NAC. Okay, the first comment is, the results suggest NAC may positively affect the dopaminergic system in patients with PD, with corresponding positive clinical effects, the researcher stated. Larger scale studies are warranted. Daniel Monti, the study's lead author, said in a press statement, that the study is an important step in understanding how N-acetylcysteine might work as a potentially new avenue for managing Parkinson's patients. Another doctor added, NAC appears to enable dopamine neurons to recover some of their function. And the study's senior author and director of research said, this is an exciting study that suggests a natural molecule such as NAC can help improve dopamine function and symptom in Parkinson's patients. Okay, those statements are, to me, as a person with Parkinson's, earth-shattering. Because we're always hearing about these drugs coming down the pipeline that never seem to make it to the market. And here, they've got something naturally produced, available. I'm awestruck that there isn't a huge research project going into this. I wish there was something we could do about it. So where does that leave us? Well, in my opinion, it leaves us uh, standing there with holding some signs on the sidewalk going, please research NAC. If anybody does start taking the NAC and the glutathione, please let me know because I would like confirmation of the improvements that I've been having. So I'm not saying just run out there and buy all this up. I'm saying make an informed decision. Check the information I've provided. To find out if this is right for you to try it. You know, make sure it's not interfering with your other medications. I don't want to ring the alarm bell and say the sky is falling. I just want a cautious approach to this. Like I say always, I'm always looking for things that can help us. And I don't bring something to the channel and tell you about it unless I'm sure that there is some decent research behind it. Thank you for watching and supporting this channel. Let's continue to take this journey together. I'll see you on the next one. Have a good day. Goodbye.